Today, we're reviewing the Casper One mattress, part of Casper's brand new mattress line that launched March 2024. This particular model is the most affordable in their new lineup. However, it's also their thinnest. That has proven to be problematic from our experience with the 200 plus mattresses we've tested to date, but I'm always ready to be proven wrong. Today, we're running the Casper One through our battery of 10 objective and data-driven tests to see how well it performs. First up, let's look at the ratings by category for each performance test. Right off the bat, I'm not overly impressed. Response time scored a 10 out of 10. Edge Sport, Sex, and Company were not far behind with high nine scores. But from there, we see cooling and off-gassing both score 9.0s. Motion transfer dipped below that at an 8.9, and the lowest scoring category was pressure relief at an 8.0. Overall, the Casper One scored a 9.17 out of 10. This isn't terrible, but it is well below the average score across the 200 plus mattresses we've tested to date, which is a 9.49. The Casper One has one firmness option that is a medium firm feel with a rating of 6 out of 10, where 10 is the most firm. This is a balanced firmness level and is well liked by a majority of sleeper positions and body types. Next, we're going to talk through what the Casper One does best. First, it has a fast material response. Its ability to recover back to shape is nearly tied with the fastest we've seen across all mattresses tested to date. Second, it has excellent edge support for sitting. This is great for getting ready in the morning, watching TV, or for amorous activities, but the lying edge support left something to be desired. Third, this is the least expensive model in the Caster mattress lineup. It's priced just under $1,000 at the time of the recording of this video. However, all mattresses aren't ideal for all sleepers. Let's talk through the important consideration points for the Casper One. First, the objective performance score is among the bottom 6% of all mattresses tested to date. While there were some decent scoring categories, it averaged out to be pretty lackluster overall. Second, motion transfer was a bit high for my taste. It's not so bad to warn off everybody, but sleepers who are sensitive to motion should be wary of choosing this one. Last, the Caster One is not ideally suited for heavier weighted bodies due to the thin comfort layer and overall support. Your body weight and sleeping position impact the types of mattress that are best able to support you. Our analysis is designed to help match the correct mattress to the right body types and sleeping positions. The Caster One has good support, but not incredible. During our test, I felt well supported by the mattress. However, the pressure relief issues are undoubtedly going to cause problems for some sleepers. For a mattress to create great support, it needs to be comfortable enough that you can lie in the same position while also keeping your body in alignment. The Caster One does a good job of keeping the body in general alignment. However, the pressure relief issues simply make it less comfortable to lie in the same position. At just 140 pounds, I felt a notable level of pressure relief issues during our testing. In my view, moderate weighted and heavier weighted bodies, in addition to side sleepers, are most likely to experience these support issues. Lighter weighted bodies, as well as back and stomach sleepers, are less likely to experience these. On screen now is the table that shows our recommendation for each sleeper weight and sleep positions that would be best suited for this mattress. Be sure to visit us over at naplab.com slash mattress dash quiz. There, you can submit your needs and preferences, and we'll send you back a personalized recommendation based on your inputs. Next up, we're going to move on to our individual performance tests. At NapLab, we test each mattress by analyzing according to 10 different factors that impact the feel, comfort, and performance. First up, we have our cooling test. To measure cooling, we lie on the mattress for 15 minutes, allowing it to absorb body heat. Then, we get off the mattress and take periodic measurements of the surface level temperature. Our tests show how the mattress retains and releases heat and overall cooling performance. Mattresses that breathe better, retain less heat, and sleep cooler are better as they allow sleepers to maintain a comfortable temperature. The Caster One has good cooling performance, but it's nothing special. During our test, I felt a slight to moderate level of heat retention around my body. From a cooling perspective, the mattress has a pretty basic all-foam design. The mattress has no cooling features to speak of. No convoluted foam, no gel, no copper, no phase change, no coils, and the all-foam design does the mattress no cooling favors. 
In mm -hmm. our objective temperature testing, we measured a max surface level temperature of 89.6 degrees, which is about average. For many sleepers, Casper 1 will be cool enough to not be a serious issue. However, if you describe yourself as a hot or a warm sleeper, you'll likely find the cooler performance just isn't good enough. If this is you, then the Casper Snow is likely a better choice. For the sinkage test, we lie on the mattress. In addition, we use a 12 pound medicine ball to test pressure point sinkage. Deeper sinkage can cause sleepers to feel overly enveloped by the material layers, while less sinkage can make you feel that you're sleeping more on top of the mattress as opposed to in it. Sinkage is a preferential factor. Some prefer more, others less. In our pressure point test, we measured a sinkage depth of 1.77 inches. This is 0.39 inches less than the average of 2.16 inches and is considered a minimal level of sinkage. The mattress creates more of a floating feel for sleeping bodies as opposed to sinking down in the mattress. There is very little body contour and very little hug. While some sleepers do prefer this type of feel, for many sleepers, I expect this feel coupled with the limited 3 inch comfort layer is going to create pressure relief issues. Suffice to say, I'm just not blown away with the sinkage and the comfort dynamic on the Casper 1. To test motion transfer, we place one 12 pound medicine ball on one side of the mattress and drop another 12 pound medicine ball on the opposite side. In addition, we use an accelerometer to objectively measure the motion generated by the medicine ball drop. Lower motion transfer is better as it helps sleeping partners avoid disturbing each other during the night. The Casper 1 has a moderate level of motion transfer. During our test, we measured an acceleration range of 9.42 meters per second squared. This is 9.2% more motion transfer than the average of 8.64 meters per second squared. The minimal level of sinkage is creating much of the excess motion. Mattresses with less motion typically have a more notable level of sinkage. This allows energy to be more deeply and evenly dispersed and dissipated by the foam layers. In the case of the Casper 1, those motion events only sink to a minimal level before rebounding up, creating more motion. In our motion transfer chart, which visualizes our accelerometer data, we can see the highest motion from 0 to 0 0.15 seconds. Motion drops immediately thereafter, and by 0 0.60 seconds, we've returned to near zero levels. While the motion peak is a little higher than is ideal, the motion duration is quite restrained. The all-foam design and looser-thin cover are definitely helping to limit motion, even if the initial spike is a little higher than average. To test response time, we place a 12-pound medicine ball on the mattress. Once it's fully at rest, we then quickly remove it and objectively measure the amount of time it takes for the mattress to recover and resume its original shape. A faster response time is better, as quicker responding material layers better adapt to your changes in movement and prevent any type of a stuck feeling. The Gas Room 1 has an extremely fast material response. During our test, we measured a mostly recovered response time of 0.2 seconds and a fully recovered response time of 0.4 seconds. Both of these are notably faster than the averages of 0.41 seconds to mostly recover and 0.88 seconds to fully recover. While the memory foam layer within the core of the mattress is a little slower relative to the other foams used, it's not slow by any absolute measure. By coupling the memory foam with other high response polyfoams and a minimal level of sinkage, the mattress rebounds the shape effectively instantly. To run the bounce test, we drop a 12 pound medicine ball onto the mattress. We measure the maximum depth the ball sinks to before rebounding up, as well as the maximum height it achieved on the bounce. Bounce is a preferential factor. Some prefer more, others less. However, more bounce is typically better than less as it improves ease of movement, aids in response time, and improves sex performance. The Caster 1 has a moderate level of bounce. During our test, we measured a total bounce range of 8.77 inches. This is 0.84 inches less bounce than the average of 9.71 inches. Ideally, I like to see a bounce range of 8 to 12 inches. The Caster 1 is on the low end of that range, but still within. The lower bounce is definitely helping to keep motion transfer lower. While the bounce is lower than average, it's definitely not low. So while sex performance and ease of movement aren't quite as good as they would be with a high level of bounce, they aren't severely negatively impacted. For an assessment of edge support, I lie on and sit on the edge of the mattress to measure the level of support and compression. A sinkage while sitting and lying directly on the edge of the mattress is better as it creates a more supportive edge for sleeping, lounging, and amorous activities. The Caster 1 was a mixed bag for edge support. While sitting edge support was excellent, lying edge support left something to be desired. In our sitting edge support test, we measured a sitting sinkage compression of 3.5 inches. This is 0.57 inches less sitting sinkage than the average of 4.07 inches. My benchmark for excellent edge support is 4.0 inches or less, and the Caster 1 easily exceeded that mark. 
While sitting on the edge, the mattress retains its shape and I feel well supported. Edge support while lying on the edge is good, but also far from great. While lying on the edge, I felt reasonably well supported, but it also feels like the mattress will struggle to support more moderate and heavier weighted bodies. The relative thickness of the mattress as a whole, coupled with good but not great material quality, creates a mattress edge that is lacking. In addition, there is no reinforced edge, no perimeter support foam, and a fairly thin 10-inch all-foam design. None of these factors are doing the Caster 1 any favors with respect to edge support. Our sex test uses a weighted formula to assess sex performance. Higher balance, more supportive edges are the most important factors, with noise, pressure relief, and cooling being lesser weighted inputs. Mattresses with more bounce and better edge support perform better for sex, as do mattresses that don't make as much noise and are more comfortable to lie on. The Caster 1 has excellent sex performance. We measured bounce at a moderate level with 8.77 inches. Certainly, more bounce is better for sex performance, but 8.77 inches is enough so that the mattress works with you. In addition, edge support while sitting was sufficiently strong enough to earn good marks there as well. That said, the lack of coils does create a rhythm problem for the dance without pants. Even so, it's comfortable enough surface that doesn't sink too deeply, rebounds a reasonable level of energy, and has good enough bounce. For most sleepers, I don't foresee the horizontal hokey pokey to be problematic. Our pressure relief test is a measure of overall pressure relief performance. We analyze materials, layers, thicknesses, density, and design elements in conjunction with a subjective assessment of our experience while lying on the mattress. Mattresses with better pressure relief are able to create a more comfortable sleeping surface. The Caster 1 has a fair level of pressure relief at best. During our test, I felt a moderate level of pressure points building on my body, especially on my back. Fundamentally, this is a basic all-foam mattress. It has a limited 3-inch comfort layer with a thin 10-inch total thickness. According to Caster's website, the mattress is supposed to be 11 inches, but ours very clearly came in at just 10 inches. Thinner mattresses often struggle with pressure relief, as do mattresses with a thinner comfort layer. The average comfort layer thickness based on all of our tests to date is 4.2 inches. Casper's 1's 3-inch comfort layer is well short of the average. The overall average total mattress height is 12.0 inches, where again, Casper is well short of average. The comfort foams simply don't have much give to them. This results in the body coming into more significant contact with the support foam, which is quite hard. While lying in the same position for just a few minutes at a time, I could feel pressure points building up, especially in my back. The Caster 1 definitely isn't an expensive mattress, but at nearly $1,000, I expect far better pressure relief from what the Caster 1 was able to deliver. To evaluate off-gassing, we assess the mattress following the initial unboxing, taking a subjective measure of any strong smells. We monitor the mattress over a period of days until the mattress no longer has a strong odor. Mattresses with a less strong odor and or an odor that dissipates more quickly are better. Off-gassing on the Caster 1 is strong right out of the box, and the odors take 12 days to fully dissipate. For reference, the average off-gassing period is 5 days, so the Caster 1 is more than double that. The company's core takes a look at the factors that may influence your experience with the mattress. Factors include length of the trial period, warranty, shipping costs, return costs, and country of origin. Casper's company terms and conditions are pretty typical compared to what we see across the industry. They offer a 100-night trial period and 10-year warranty on any of their mattresses. Comparing all mattresses tested to date, the average trial length is 164 nights, so Casper's trial is shorter than average. That being said, 100 nights should still be enough time for you to properly decide if you like the mattress or not. I would recommend the Caster 1 mattress for sleepers who are looking for an all-fall mattress that won't break the bank. The price of a queen size at the time of recording this video is just under $1,000. In addition, I think it's a solid choice for sleepers that weigh 150 pounds or less due to the thinness of the design. From a performance perspective, the fast response and moderate bounce make for both improved ease of movement and a surface that is good for sex. Finally, sleepers would need to prefer less sinkage as this model doesn't have a ton of give and creates more of a floating feel as opposed to sinking down in the mattress. The price of the Casper 1 is 10% less than the average foam mattress, which does provide some savings, but still not really enough to justify the lower performance level. For most sleepers, it's going to be worth stepping up to the Casper Dream or a different mattress brand altogether. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope it's helpful. Comments or questions, please drop us those notes down below. If you're interested in buying the Casper One, we've got a link in the description. For more from NapLab, be sure to get subscribed, ring that bell, and visit us over at naplab.com. As always, thank you so much for watching.